Cumulative frequency. Now, let's think about where we are in this topic. We know what frequency means, right? How frequently, how, how much, uh, how many an event, a score occurs within a data set, right? Now, this word cumulative out the front means well, we're not just going to count how many individually there are per score, we're also going to include the accumulation of all the previous scores as well, okay, hence cumulative. Now, we're going to use this as an example, and <laughs> to put it really bluntly for you, why do we need to care about cumulative frequency? Um, there's a lot of reasons, but it seems timely to say to all of you guys, um, one of the very many reasons is ATAR. I'm not going to explain that yet. I'm just going to let it sit there for a little while and see if you can tell me when it clicks. Who are you looking for? Reminder. Yep. Okay. Thank you very much. All right, so we will come back to that, uh, that pointer later. And uh, if any of you work out at what point you're like, oh, now I know why you said that at the beginning, let me know. If not, I'll tell you at the end. To get to there, let's start with this set of data. Now, it says the frequency table below shows the marks achieved by a bunch of students on a particular exam. Now, the thing I want to focus on, unsurprisingly, in this table is the cumulative frequency, which we need to fill in. Okay? So you've got these classes over there on the left-hand side. Um, I'm going to start to jot them down. And the first thing I'm going to ask is, why do you think we sometimes gather data into classes. What is the point of having a bracket like 30 to 39, 40 to 49, and so on? Sarah, you want to give a first suggestion? Um, so if you have, what you say yesterday to me, if you have heights in a classroom, mm -hmm. not everyone's going to have 150, 156. One, so you'd mm -hmm. class it from like 150, 160, and then you'd range everything because you won't have everyone having identical. Perfect. Like, okay. Very good. So if you didn't quite catch that, and maybe similar people had, uh, do you have a different reason or a similar oh, one? I was just yeah, 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 yeah. These are, these are both the same kind of thing, right? So do you remember we said before we were comparing measures of central tendency, um, the three of which were, they all started with M? Mean, mean mode, mode medium. medium, very good. And we said, you know, they all have pros and cons. One of the big disadvantages of, say, the mode, the most common one is, and the example I gave a few of you was, in this class, what is the modal height of a person in this class? And there's likely to be no modal height, because everyone's like off by a half a centimeter or something like that. So there's no height, 178 centimeters for example, which is my height, where there's multiple people, right? So we would group them and then we'd say, ah, from, uh, from 170 to 175, there's a group. From 176 to 180, there's another group. And then clearly one of those might stand out, okay? How many have I got? Am I missing one more? Okay, very good. By the way, I'm buying time for you to put this into your own book also. Okay, Will? So in the book, it is supposed to say 80 to 89, and it says 79. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yes, well pointed out. It is supposed to say 80 to 89. So here are the scores that we've got. Uh, I'm going to skip over class center just for now. And then we've got a frequency. Okay, are you on the right spot? You're trying to find out where you are? Yep, this is exercise two. So it says Question five. 79. Yeah, that's a typo. That's a typo. Just to see if you're awake, which you obviously are. Um, can someone help me out? Because I'm just not going to keep going back to that. What are the frequencies listed for each one? What's the top one? Per? Yep, three. Six. Six. Nine. Twelve. Yep. No, nine. Fifteen. Fifteen. Eighteen. Ten. I thought I heard a nine. Anyway, never mind. Okay, so that's fine. We've got our frequencies there. So you could immediately tell me, for example, uh, what's the mode? The mode in this case is what we call a modal class because these are all classes, right? The mode's a single value. The mode's a single value. So I could get the class center, um, and that would be different again. So I'd love you all to label with me. This is the first thing you can add on to your table here. 70 to 79. We don't just call it the mode, the mode's a single score. We call this guy the modal class. There we go. Okay. So very good, label that on, that's important. And then this final column that we're really interested in, and we're going to actually start drawing together. If you don't have a ruler, it would be really useful to have one. I know at least Tyler's got one. Um, is cumulative frequency, cumulative frequency. So like I said, what this includes is the frequency of that class or that score, including all of the previous ones. Okay, so it's pretty easy to start at the top. There are no previous classes for this first one. 
So it's just three. When you go to the next class down, 40 to 49, you include the six that are in 40 to 49 and all the previous ones. So what will the cumulative frequency be? Good. Or maybe that's what you were calculating. Okay. And then you take that number and it accumulates according to the new one. So it's going to be 21, then 36. 54, 64. Fantastic. Okay, very good. Now we're going to use this in a second. We're going to put it onto a graph. You can see that this, <coughs> excuse me, 64 down the bottom is, is handy in and of itself because this is the total group of people, right? This is n equals 64. Okay? It's worth pointing out another color for this one. Since n equals 64, I'll put it, I'll put it here. If this is the number of scores there, this is an appropriate time to remind you all because we didn't really talk about it yesterday. You can go straight from n equals 64 to immediately work out what the median is, or I should say where the median is. Um, we know if there's a small set of data, we can just do the crossing off thing, right? Get it in order. But there's a way we can go straight from this immediately to where the median is. Tavar, what are you thinking? Like n plus 1 divided by 2. n plus 1 divided by 2. That'll be the position of the median. Okay? Um, in this case, n plus 1 is 65. You divide that by 2 gives you 32 and a half, which means between the 32nd and the 33rd scores, whatever that is, that'll be your median. Okay? Um, if, of course, you had an odd number here, um, the one I gave you before was 5, I think. Suppose you had n equals 5. What will n plus 1 be in this case? 6. So 6 divided by 2 will give you score number? Three, which is the bang on in the middle. Okay, so this tells us, all right, the median is going to be between 32 and 33. Where is that on here? You have to count through the frequencies. So yeah, you sort of got to keep on counting, right? Now, 15. it looks to me like it's going to be somewhere in here, but which one is it? 15. Is it going to be in this one or is it going to be in this one? Hmm. Now, to be sure, some of you have some good intuition for this. Some of you. Not quite so confident. Um, we're going to remember a really helpful tool here called a cumulative frequency polygon. That's a bit of a mouthful, cumulative frequency polygon. So there is a short and weird name for it, the cumulative frequency polygon. We call it, we call it an ogive. I hope you've seen that word before, even if you have no memory of what it is. We're going to do one of these together. So what I'd love you to do is, and please, please, use a ruler for this because the accuracy actually really matters. In fact, I'm going to go and dash to a room nearby and get a ruler myself. All right, now, you've got your ruler there. Before we put pen to paper, let's think about our axes, right? What we're going to be graphing is going to be the classes these scores over here, as compared to our cumulative frequency, because it's a cumulative frequency polygon that we're going to draw. So across the bottom, which is going to be scores, we're going to have to range from 30, that's our lowest score, all the way up to 89 or 90. We'll do it in tens, right? So that's going to be across the bottom. You can start to think about how wide that should be. In terms of the height of this thing, what's the lowest value? <laughs> The lowest value, well, the lowest num number I've written here is three, but I think there's cause to actually start from zero, right? We start from the bottom and then we count it up. I'm going to go from zero all the way down to, or up to, 64. I'm just going to make it round and go up to 70, okay? So go ahead, use your grid carefully, because as it turns out, in many parts of like graphing things, the exact like details and precision is not that important. Like where exactly is the stationary point? It's okay if it's rough, but for this we're actually going to use the precision of your cumulative frequency polygon to actually do calculations. So please use your ruler carefully. Let me give you some time to do that. I have to do it as well. Maybe two or three minutes and then we'll have a graph we're ready to put onto here, okay?